Well, thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And what we're going to be doing today, you know, it says how to get the most out of thoracic radiographs. So there's an assumption here, and that's that you're producing high quality thoracic radiographs. If you're not doing that, then you're not going to see the things that we're going to be talking about and looking at here uh, today or this afternoon. So with that in mind, the first key point is that heartworm disease is an endovascular disease of the pulmonary arteries. So in other words, the pulmonary arteries are going to be the first radiographic changes that we're going to see in some of those original heartworm studies that Dr. Um, Rawlings did back at the University of Georgia found that the right caudal lobar pulmonary artery is in fact the first vessel that becomes involved and that's predominantly just a flow hemodynamic phenomenon. So if we look at this set of radiographs, here's uh, a normal dog okay, that was heartworm positive. So it's normal from the perspective that he's got normal thoracic radiographs. These vessels, as they come all the way out here, taper nicely all the way out into the periphery. We can see the aorta, we see the caudal vena cava, the vessels over the heart and over the lung and diaphragm area here are all normal. So that's the right lateral. Here's a left lateral. Again, we're looking at the peripheral vessels coming all the way out here. We're looking at artery bronchus vein. Remember that the pulmonary arteries are actually dorsal and lateral to the bronchus and the vein. Or you can remember the mnemonic that veins are central and ventral. So here we've got the pulmonary artery, here's the bronchus, and here's the vein in this left cranial lung lobe uh, uh, pulmonary bronchus. And then if we look at the standard that we're going to be utilizing for veterinary medicine, it's a three-view thorax, a right lateral, a left lateral, and either a ventrodorsal, which is here on your left, or a dorsoventral, which is here on the right. All three of these images have been marked inspiratory. You've got to catch them on end of inspiration, or you'll wind up with an unstructured interstitial pulmonary pattern, which can mimic disease. In this particular case on the ventrodorsal, you don't see those caudal lobar vessels as well because the dog is on its back and it's actually compressing this area just due to gravity and the abdominal contents. Here in this particular case on the dorsal ventral radiograph, you can see the pulmonary artery extending all the way past the diaphragmatic cupula and back over the diaphragmatic cruce. And here's the pulmonary vein. Here's caudal vena cava from here to here. Again, over on this side, here's pulmonary artery extending all the way out in pulmonary vein. All right, so the key point is that you can have normal radiographs in heartworm positive dogs. You've made the, the identification of microfilaria or the antigen test or however you've actually positively ID'd the dog. Remember that not all of those tests are 100% accurate, so in fact you can have radiographic changes that are highly uh, compatible with heartworm disease. Matter of fact, only heartworm disease will cause pulmonary artery changes that we're going to talk about um, here on this side of the uh, Atlantic. So you can have normal to any pulmonary pattern, and you can have right-sided cardiomegaly, right heart failure, main pulmonary artery enlargement. Those are all kind of the key classic features that we talk about in severe pulmonary hypertensive cases of dogs with heartworm disease. So we're going to have a tail of four dogs, four different dogs here. And we're going to start with the first uh, dog. Just remember, from a pulmonary pattern standpoint, I'm going to be describing things as either a mass, an alveolar pulmonary pattern, a bronchial, a vascular, a structured interstitial, and an unstructured interstitial. Now, a lot of people don't include vascular as a pulmonary pattern, and the reason for that is it's not actually something that is happening within the interstitium and the alveolar space of the lungs. But in fact, the vessels contribute greatly to the overall opacity of the lung radiograph as far as a structure goes. Matter of fact, if you think of a dog that is hypovolemic and how dark the lung fields are, that's purely a vascular event where the vessels are all small and the capillary beds are small. So let's look at the first case, a normal physical exam, routine workup, blood work's normal, and we take thoracic radiographs. Now on thoracic radiographs, we can see that there are some big vessels. Right here, this is enlargement and tortuosity of a pulmonary artery. Right here, how do I know it's a pulmonary artery? I don't. Okay, because remember, caudodorsally, you can't tell artery versus vein. So at this stage in the game, I'm highly suspicious because veins don't do this. Arteries will, veins do not. Even in dogs with chronic congestive heart failure, left-sided heart failure, the veins will not become this type of thickened, irregular, and tortuous. Here's also some big vessels, big vessel here coming over the diaphragm. Remember, the lung extends over the diaphragm to this region right here. And this is a very thin section of lung, so you can get a great idea as to what is actually happening within the pulmonary space in this thin section of lung right in through here. So here's the left lateral again. We've got some very large vessels here, much bigger vessel. We're just seeing 
uh, right side versus left side here in this left lateral. And then when we go to the ventral dorsal radiograph, we pick up this tortuous vessel that's still enlarged. It actually thickens out here. Normally, this vessel should taper, should be straight, and should come out to a single point. It actually is very tortuous. It's got blunting associated with some of the branching. It's got big vessels associated with off to the side. This is an endon vessel, not a pulmonary nodule or a metastatic lesion. And you can see that these arteries then, these arteries are enlarged and tortuous. But the dog was normal on physical examination. Now, if you went back and kind of uh, re-listened, you might hear something as far as his lung sounds go. But from a, just a purely physical exam standpoint, he might be slowing down when you try and jog him, you know, 12 miles or whatever. But the reality is, is that you can have a normal physical exam and wind up having changes like this. Or you can actually have a dog that's coughing and have normal thoracic radiographs. So the key point is that the earliest changes are in fact going to be pulmonary artery changes. The pulmonary arteries become enlarged, tortuous, and it may just be the peripheral vessels and the right caudal lung lobe is the first one to actually become enlarged. So case number two, normal physical exam, history of a cough, and we took thoracic radiographs. And in this particular case, we're starting to see much more enlargement of the vessels, but we're also starting to get a bronchial, this is thickened airways right in here, and then this whiteness in between is an unstructured interstitial pulmonary pattern. So we're getting not only a vascular pattern, but we're getting a bronchial pattern, and we're getting an unstructured interstitial pattern. So we're seeing that heartworms, in fact, can cause multiple patterns, different lung patterns, and it's all related to the same disease. This is the right cranial pulmonary artery, as far as this big vessel right here, and you can see it abruptly terminates. This is blunting, okay, or termination and tortuosity associated with that vessel that's enlarged. Again, just looking at it uh, left lateral, you can see these big vessels superimposed over the rib shadows right in through here, and big vessels coming out here. This is a big vessel end on. This is not a pulmonary nodule or met. And here's another big vessel end on. And then looking at the ventral dorsal radiograph, now, in our particular case, if you're using digital radiography, um, we usually start right lateral, then go VD, then left lateral. And what winds up happening is since we lay them down in right lateral to begin with, they get atelectatic on the right side. So you see this mediastinal shift to the right or the atelectatic side. That's purely related to how we actually take the radiographs. Okay, it, it has nothing to do with this dog's disease at this stage in the game. But he's starting to get main pulmonary artery enlargement right in through here. And um, I wouldn't say that he's actually got severe right ventricular enlargement, but he's definitely got the mediastinal shift, which again is just related to the atelectasis. So the key point is to remember that when you get heartworm disease, you can have an allergic reaction that will result in a bronchial pattern and an unstructured interstitial pattern. And it's purely due to the eosinophils. So these eosinophils can set up an eosinophilic pneumonitis. And again, that's the unstructured interstitial pulmonary pattern. All right, here's case number three, increased respiratory rate, a history of cough, eosinophilia, and uh, thoracic radiographs were made. And in this particular case, what you see is a diffuse bronchial pulmonary pattern. Now, I delineate that. Remember, we had some big vessels. The big vessels were kind of coming out to the side here and coming back here in the cotodorsal lung fields. But now in this case, if I look at it, I can see lots of lines which are what are, the old uh, term was the train tracks right here. You see lots of rings, rings all the way out here in the periphery, rings here. And again, I want to look thin section of lung. So down here in the periphery, we see lines coming all the way out. That's thickened airway wall. That's purely airway wall thickening. Uh, this is just the left lateral then. Again, we see some rings and we see some thickened lines as far as the airways go. Again, here's a nice ring, here's a nice ring. This is thickening of the airway wall coming all the way out. And then on the ventral dorsal projection, you can actually see that he has no right heart enlargement at all. This is just a fake out from the fact that we caught him more in systole as far as his M MPA goes, but his heart's in a normal position here. And what I'm using to tell that is the apex is here over on the left-hand side versus the case before we saw the apex was right there centrally positioned and the right side of the heart then was shifted over towards the right. So in this particular case, we don't have any evidence of a mediastinal shift. But we don't see a lot of pulmonary artery enlargement either. 
So this is a case where the dog actually has an eosinophilic bronchopneumonopathy, which is primarily a bronchial pulmonary pattern. We call it allergic lung disease. But remember, the first rule out with uh, pulmonary uh, uh, allergic lung disease is going to be heartworm disease. And in fact, this dog was heartworm positive. So we got rid of the heartworms. He actually, his bronchial, uh, eosinophilic bronchopneumonopathy went away within a month. And we found that, again, it was again related to the allergic eosinophilic bronchitis that was set up secondary to the heartworm disease. All right, in case number four, here we've got a dog that's got a split S2. And I'll leave that to the cardiologist to actually explain that. Um, abdominal distension, abnormal lung sounds, history of a cough, and we've taken thoracic radiographs. And this is Max. Of course, Max is not going to sit still for thoracic radiographs because it's a shepherd. So in looking at it here, we can actually see the big pulmonary arteries here and big pulmonary arteries extending back. But if we start to look, we see that there's more opacity here caudal dorsally than we'd expect for normal. We don't see the vessels as well. And that's because there's also an unstructured interstitial pulmonary pattern on top of the pulmonary vascular pattern. Again, if we look here on the left lateral, we again see increased opacity here caudal dorsally. It does have pulmonary, big pulmonary arteries. Here, his right heart is rotated away from the sternum. Now, that can actually be a left lateral radiograph. If we look at the right lateral radiograph, the heart is actually right next to the sternum, and the apex is in a normal position. If the heart rotates away on a right lateral radiograph, you know you have severe right ventricular enlargement. And in this particular case, we've got a whiteout as far as the abdomen goes. So this dog had ascites. He's got pulmonary arteries that you can drive a truck through, OK? This is all pulmonary artery on his, going to his right caudal lung lobe, and then it abruptly terminates. There's his pulmonary vein. And this is a huge pulmonary artery coming to his left, pulmonary, uh, left caudal lung lobe, and then it abruptly terminates. He's got a main pulmonary artery segment, and he's got right ventricular enlargement that we see here that we didn't really appreciate on the lateral radiographs. So when you fill in this space between 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock, and you get that reverse D appearance, that's when you'll actually wind up seeing the right-sided cardiomegaly and severe right-sided changes that you would pick up on echocardiography. So the key point is that cardiac changes do result, but it's an end stage. It's after they get pulmonary hypertension. So the vessels actually uh, become thickened to the point where they're restrictive. And then as they restrict, the actual pressures go up. They get core pulmonale. They get main pulmonary artery enlargement. They get right ventricular enlargement and right heart failure, leading to ascites, caudal vena cava enlargement, and pleural effusion. Now, that dog did not have pleural effusion yet. Typically, they'll get the ascites first. So the main point to these different presentations is that anytime you have a heartworm positive dog, the actual thoracic radiographs could be totally normal or they can be totally abnormal. And it kind of depends upon how you're picking up on the physical exam the different features of right-sided heart failure and or uh, changes related to the pulmonary uh, uh, tract. The cardiac changes are typically secondary to core pulmonale, so the pulmonary vascular changes occur first. And the final point would be that when you're taking these radiographs, one thing that you have to do, and we don't have an ideal situation here, is actually dim the lights, take three views, and make sure you evaluate the pulmonary artery and the vein. They should be a one-to-one -one relationship as they go out into the periphery and taper. So the earliest changes we're going to look for are going to be pulmonary artery changes. And that specifically is going to be what we're going to look for in the dog, is the pulmonary vascular changes first, and then the other changes that follow along. And probably the final point I would make is that you can have aberrant adult heartworm migrations, which is rare, but they can wind up in arteries that are totally unrelated to the lung system totally unrelated to the heart. They can wind up in the brain, can wind up in the hind leg, and actually cause a hind limb lameness. So just remember that if you have uh, an actual heartworm-positive dog and you've got something else going on in the periphery of the dog, you could easily have aberrant adult heartworms out in those vessels. Thank you.